Hi. So in this video, we're going to walk through a little bit of the new functionality of Cisco version 8.1 in regards to flow direction. Uh, flow direction is something that we've added in this version of Cisco, and what it's going to do is going to provide a little bit of predictability to your model and help you to make sure that you maintain productive and accurate models. So to start off, let's go ahead and take a look at the settings. We have introduced two settings for this utility. And to find your settings, you simply go to your Cisco menu and then your settings icon here. And check the other settings tab and you'll see here we've added flow direction. We have two options, uh, duct only and duct and fittings. And I'll show you in just a second exactly how that relays to the model in, in active modeling. Uh, once you have your settings decided on, go ahead and click apply and close. And how this works is you can actually see from this model here that I have is there's a couple arrows, right? So if you zoom in on it, you can see this arrow is actually designating the flow direction of this tapped run here. For the main run, you can see that we have this arrow kicking out on the end. Um, and how that works is for standard flow, which would be we want to designate our flow being from our first click to our second click. Uh, if that's the case, then you just left click your Cisco duct as you normally would in previous releases. And this is going to build your model essentially from C1 to C2 and continue down the run. Uh, let's create a quick example here. I'm just going to go ahead and draw in simple run. Notice that my first click here, second click here, escape, escape, typical detailing. Let it finish processing. Now, one thing to keep in mind is you remember the setting that I had decided on uh, when we visited the settings was duct only. So now if we take a look, so you see that I have my arrow here and I also have some connector graphics for my duct joints. I'm gonna go ahead and expose all of them so you guys can see. Let's go ahead and expose my project browser. And you, you can find these couplings over here under your duct fittings. They're going to be listed as your coupling face based C1 and C2. My C1s are already exposed, so I'm going to go ahead and um, select all instances of my C2. And within the properties, there is an option in here for connector ID. And this will turn all of them on and off within the model using the workflow I just did. Uh, we will be implementing a, a utility to make this a little more simple for you in the future. But for now, you can just turn them off and on um, either independently or from the project browser. And so you see if we start here with uh, connector one, we run the connector two and so on. Now, with the setting that I had for duct only, what that's going to do is that's only going to align my duct, which in most instances is OK. Um, now, if you want to align your fittings with it as well, basically what that's going to do is that's going to align every right hand bend for you. So Revit has a tendency to always draw left hand bends, right? So what it boils down to is if we only select our duct in the options for flow direction, our right hand bends are going to be built backwards. Now, some of you may care, some of you may not. What it does at the very least is it's going to let you know which which opening is which, right? So you'll always know, depending on which fitting you're using, if you haven't watched it yet, go take a look on the YouTube channel. We do have a short video about our new fittings that we're releasing. Um, some of you might be wondering, what is this C1 and C2 on this elbow? It's an identification for some new fittings. Go ahead and take a look at the new video on YouTube. Um, so at the very least, if you're using a new video, you'll know that within your flow direction, a right-hand bend is going to give you C2 first, or it's going to give you EXT two first if you're using an old fitting, right? So you can kind of count on that pretty much 100% of the time. Uh, the only times where that'll be a little bit of ambiguity is if you're running a vertical uh, duct run. Um, so that's something to keep in mind when you set the settings for flow direction is do I need my elbows? Do I want my elbows to fall in line with the flow direction? Setting it with duct and fittings. Fittings is gonna take a little bit longer to process, but if you're really interested in in the consistency of that placement, uh, maybe that's going to be the option for you. Okay, so we'll take a little uh, take a look at um, 
the arrow settings, right? So what you're going to get is you're going to get an arrow at the beginning and the run, and I'm sorry, in the end of each run as you're detailing. So if I were to set this to wireframe, you'll see a small arrow here at the beginning as well. Um, if you're in hidden line like I just was, you won't notice it uh, because it's actually being concealed by the center line of the duct, but you will notice one at the end. Um, so what does flow direction actually mean for us? Well, what it means is that when we make modifications to our run, it's actually going to predict for us which way these changes are going to take effect. And specifically, this is going to be helpful when you take a look at things like uh, our new duct length parameter, right? So if you want to make sure that you're always moving to the right, so for instance here, our, my modifications to any piece of duct here, if I'm changing the length, are going to take effect downstream, right? So my flow is going from left to right. I know that any modifications I make are going to get pushed downstream and take effect at the end of the run. So for instance, I'm going to go ahead and click this second duct here and I'm gonna access uh, our duct length parameter. And again, if you haven't seen the video for duct length and connectors, go jump over to YouTube and take a look. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and make this duct length just an arbitrary 65 inches. And you can see that that 65 inches, whatever that added to this duct actually got consumed here at the end in front of the transition. So that's what this flow direction does is it gives you some predictability so you don't have to worry about where my changes are going to take effect. As you get to detailing and get comfortable with this method, everything you do as you make your modifications and coordination down the run, you'll know exactly where it's going to get consumed. So now what if you don't want your run to be from first click to second click, right? There could be a scenario um, where maybe you want to reverse the flow. So I don't always want it to go from C1 to C2. Probably nowhere near as frequent as you'd want it to be um, detailed in linear fashion, but there is an option to go ahead and run with reverse flow. And that's as simple as right click the duct and you see we have this takeoff flow reverse. And so if I go ahead and model this, I'm gonna go ahead and detail essentially the exact same run that I did here with flow normal. Press escape, escape, let that process. And when that's done, we'll take a look at it and you'll see that what happened was, is you see this one here went from C1 to C2 and then continued on C1 to C2. This one here, even though I clicked at the leftmost position of this run, it actually drew from C2 to C1. And you can actually see the trigger here with this arrow actually kicking out to the left. So that means that any modifications I make to the duct in this run are gonna take effect um, down to the left. So if I wanted to extend this one, I know there's a lot of folks out there who wanna make, um, let's say we want our duct to be of even length. Uh, we'll go ahead and make this 18 inches. And you'll see that it pushes our straight to the left. Um, so that is a detail while you draw in reverse flow. There is also an option to reverse the flow on any existing duct that you may have already drawn with normal flow. So let's take a look at that. So we know that we drew this one left to right and we can see the trigger here at the end with our arrow. Um, now what if we want to reverse the flow on this duct run? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just click a a piece of duct identify you could actually click any duct in this run as it's all continuous right the flow is recognized continuously and then up here we have a contextual button um, that gives us this is our flow arrow and this gives us our two options there's a drop down right below it and this gives you two options so here at the bottom we have reverse flow so let's take a look and see how this works I'm gonna go ahead and click reverse flow let it do its business and you'll see right here, you can see that the arrow kicked out backwards and now the orientation of my connectors are identical to the run below it that I drew with reverse flow. Um, keep in mind that this, um, this utility here for reverse flow uh, will obey the settings in your Cisco settings. So if you're ignoring the duct fittings, you'll see that this 
elbow here did not flip, neither did this one, because my settings were set to duct only. So up there, you notice that we did have a utility for a line flow. And what that's for basically is if you have a duct run connected, and let's say for instance, um, so you see how this run here is drawn with flow going to the left against the detail, right? So let's go ahead and draw a flow normal here, just a strip of duct. So we'll just draw a short run. And then we will escape, escape. Let that process. All right, so you can see when this is done that we have our arrow coming out, you know, our flow is going left to right, which is opposing this one here. So now what if for some reason we want to trim these two together? All right, so now essentially we have this duct run flowing backwards, this duct run flowing forwards. So this is the part where, okay, we need to unify the flow. That way we don't end up with inconsistencies in our model. Uh, I know this run here was drawn with standard flow. So what I'm gonna do is just select this run, come up here to reverse flow and click this align flow option. And basically what it does is it takes that entire connected run and unifies the flow. So now you see that we've lost our outgoing arrow here. And if I actually switch to wireframe, you'll see that now our flow is going into the duct. We're going from C2 to C1. And it follows all the way through to the other end. So that's just a quick introduction to the new Cisco flow. Um, go ahead and jump over to YouTube, take a look at all of our new 8.1 feature additions, and everybody have a great day. We hope you enjoyed this video. Visit mep.trimble.com for even more product resources.